Everything about the beadwork carries a piece that is uniquely mine. It's humbling to know that this piece that I've created is appreciated the way that it is. My name is Steve Adamitz. I am a Chickasaw bead artist. I used to draw a lot and I was always fascinated with other forms of artwork and beading, being Chickasaw, was always something that I was drawn to. Beadwork was one of the major ways that Native Americans would express themselves. And so this is definitely a bridge back to the past. I learned from a couple of friends, basically some beginning type stitches, mainly rosette stitches and loom stitching. Taking the stitches that I had learned, I started to draw out my own patterns, things that were symbolic to me as a Chickasaw. One of the patterns that I drew up was the Southeastern Red Wolf. They are now extinct in the Southeastern United States. To me, that was akin to the Southeastern people being taken from their homelands. It took me about nine months to do that. I was taught that laying down every bead is a prayer and not to make anything too perfect, to always try to reflect your imperfection. And so in every piece of beadwork I do, I'll throw in what we call a spirit bead. It's one bead that's off color. I'll make an intentional flaw in it as a gesture to the creator that only he's perfect, not me. Beading is an important form of expression to me to give back to my people, to give back to the tribe, to make a tribal contribution, and to try to teach others that want to know that I can share that with them and pass that on. My mom was always my inspiration for doing beadwork. She was always very proud of our heritage. It would be hard for somebody who's not familiar with a lot of the Chickasaw stories to be able to understand what it is that I'm trying to express through a lot of my artwork. It's more than just patience. You have to have a technique, and technique comes through time and through practice and through repetition and then through making a lot of errors. I've taken a lot of beads and unstitched months worth of beadwork because I saw something and I was like, I don't like it. And so I'd have to remove, you know, multiple rows of beads just to, to take it back off. And that would be the equivalent of months of work. This piece right here comes from the old Mississippian period. It is the palm with the eye with the, uh, some people call them tie snakes and other people call them horned serpents. When I came across this piece right here, I saw it in my mind's eye as beadwork. I took a picture and I looked at that picture and then I started to draw the picture onto the leather. Once I drew the picture onto the leather, I sat down and went through all of my beads and I pulled out my background and then I pulled out the hand color, the eye color, and then looked at the tie snakes and thought which colors would best represent it. And that's how a piece like this would come to evolve. So I'll just start with one bead directly in the middle and pop it through, pick up my bead, go right back down, seat it down, come back up, and then I'll start in circles. Everything is a circle. And of course, circles are very powerful to Native peoples. Everything is in a circle. This is my way of contributing back to my people. You know, we take so much and we take so much for granted. And for me, this is really big. This is definitely something that we want to try to hold on to and continue to try to pass down from generation to generation. For me, the artwork is a carrying on of traditions and things thrive, things progress, things move into new times and into new centuries. And we want to try to keep these traditions alive, but at the same time reflect the inspiration of the artist himself.